Hello again! In this episode I am in Haarlem, a city west of Amsterdam, and I am visiting Tyler's Museum, the oldest museum in my country. Peter Tyler, who lived from 1702 till 1778, was a wealthy native of Haarlem, who willed his house and fortune to a foundation with the intention to improve the lives of all through art and science. As a result, Tyler's Museum opened its doors in 1784. Okay. Recently, Peter Tyler's house, which in the 18th and 19th century also was the entrance to the museum, has been completely restored and is now open to the public. This is the beautiful Oval Room, completed in 1784, with all of its interior, complete with display cases and objects, still intact. I remember being so impressed with this room and the rest of the museum when I visited with my class as a child, and to this day I still am impressed with it all. The Visitor's Guide says about this room, this was a temple of knowledge, a meeting place and a laboratory. It was here that spectacular experiments were conducted with the large electrostatic generator and where artists studied the drawings by Rembrandt and Michelangelo in the central cabinet. This was the Wikipedia of the Enlightenment, where all known information and expertise was concentrated for use in research and demonstrations to share with others. Apart from all of the scientific instruments and rock samples in the cabinets, I saw beautiful models showing the inner workings of windmills and mills. Another cabinet held these miniature houses, which were actually magician's tricks. And here is one of the two gorgeous picture galleries, filled with art from the 19th century. I was lucky to catch it empty, as it was rather busy in the museum. I won't be showing you the rest of this part of the museum, because the other reason we came to Tyler's museum was the beautifully restored and newly opened Peter Tyler House, the residence of the museum's founding father. And what all of this has to do with miniatures will become apparent if you'll just bear with me a little bit longer. Let's first look at some parts of this beautiful house. In 1784, when the museum opened, visitors entered the Oval Room through this door and through the long and impressive marble corridor of Tyler's house. Here on the right, below the staircase, is the door to the kitchen, which is rather small for such an impressive house. Many of these city houses were long and narrow, and often, like is the case here, a small open courtyard in the center of the building provided light and ventilation for the kitchen. The house has a gorgeous wooden staircase, with beautiful decorative plaster walls and ceilings and everything is original to the house from the 17th and early 18th century, except for the painting on the ceiling which was painted by the resident housemaster around 1900. 
When I visited the museum, I was lucky that the upstairs rooms were open to viewing as well. Normally, these rooms can only be viewed on a tour. And I won't be showing you all of the rooms because it was very busy at the museum and there were many children as well. And of course, I don't want them in my video. <laughs> Not that I don't like kids, but because of privacy regulations. This room at the back of the house looked out onto the large inner courtyard. And yes, that's me in the reflection there, putting on my loveliest squinting face for you. Here is that same room I was just in, but now seen from across the courtyard. And above it you can see the beautiful roof of the Oval Room. So what does all of this have to do with miniatures? Well, last year several miniaturists were commissioned and worked really hard to create a perfect 12 scale copy of Tyler's house as it looked at the time of his death in 1778. The miniature house is now permanently on display at the museum and of course I had to go and see it and show it to you as well. The 12 scale model gives an excellent impression of the house, which basically consists of three buildings connected by the long corridor. The Oval Museum room would be built behind these buildings a few years later. Here we see the entrance again, in miniature this time, and the long corridor with the beautiful marble floors, decorative elements and of course the hall bench. The kitchen, located under the stairs, is executed like the real kitchen, with marble floors and worktops, tiled walls and of course entry to the tiny courtyard. The room at the end of the long corridor would become the entry to the Oval Room. We will be able to look inside this room later at the other side of the model. The stunning staircase and its walls and ceilings were created using 3D scanning and printing technology. I think this is a perfect example for the use of this technique. Such a staircase would have been incredibly hard to recreate by using conventional techniques. The one problem they encountered with this 3D scanning and printing was that the 12 scale house was built square and the real house and its 3D model were not square so some creative solutions had to be used to fit the staircase.
This lovely small room at the front of the house has examples of etchings, drawings and watercolors adorning its walls. And at first I thought that the wallpaper was coming loose, but on closer inspection I saw that the blister or ripple effect was in fact in the print of the wallpaper. I think a very small sample was used, faults and all, and copied many times to create the wallpaper. The attics can only be seen by very tall people. Now, I know Dutch people are quite tall generally, and so am I. But I still needed my camera to look around this space. This attic was dedicated to drying the laundry. And if you've ever seen my attic room boxes, you'll recognize the wooden drying rack suspended from the ceiling. I really like the simplicity of this bedroom, with its built-in bed and cupboards with hooks for hanging the clothes. This was a servant's or maid's room. Next door to this room is another attic. Where the first attic was the drying attic, this one was the attic where the peat was stored. Peat bricks were used for heating and cooking. The peat bricks were hauled into the attic through the attic hatch. Through the long upstairs corridor, we arrive in the guest room, which I showed you in the real house earlier in the video. The one that looks out onto the large courtyard. There was one door in the real room which had many locks on it, making me wonder what was behind it. And now we can take a look and see that there's a wonderful little oak panelled room behind that door where, in its built-in cabinets, papers of value and other valuables were kept. Behind the other locked door, we find another small room. And here, valuable porcelain and glasswork was stored. It seems an odd place to me to keep porcelain, and I hope to be able to go on the museum tour one day to hear the reason why this was in there. On the ground floor is the room at the end of the long corridor through which the Oval Museum room could be entered. Before or after a visit to the museum room, this room was a place where one could study drawings, discuss art or science, and perhaps philosophize on the reason for one's existence. And this is just one of the rooms that look out onto the beautiful large courtyard.
And on the other side of the courtyard, we see the main bedroom with an impressive four-poster bed with red bed hangings. Below it and next to the kitchen is the dining room. Not much was known about this room other than it having impressive landscape wall coverings. The rush matting floor covering was a common feature in the 18th century. The kitchen is an exact copy of the full-sized one, with the beautiful marble and brass-edged worktop, special porcelain cabinet and access to the small courtyard, of course. In the first part of the house, there are more bedrooms to be found. A servant's bedroom on the top floor and a small but elegant yellow bedroom with a half-built-in bed with yellow silk bed hangings. Next to it, at the front of the house, is Peter Tyler's collector's room where specimen and books of all kinds of natural wonders of the world can be found. No doubt this was the start of the museum's collection. On the ground floor is the pronkkamer, which translated means something like showroom or best room. It had gold leather wall coverings. And this was the room where a large collection of Chinese porcelain was displayed on wall brackets and in cupboards. And finally, the last room on this tour is the room at the front of the house right next to the front door where I imagine Peter Tyler would receive visitors and perhaps discuss business with his wife and his clients. His portrait is on the wall and a miniature version of his inkstand is on the table. This was a long tour, but I really hope you enjoyed it. Until next time!